Imagine if you, in the midst of medical training, discover that the difference between being a hero in a white coat and a mere mortal confused with a stethoscope revolves around suturing arteries as if you were a master tailor of living tissues. Yes, these young medical apprentices, better known as interns, dive into a sea of techniques, surgeries, and resuscitation maneuvers that could very well be mistaken for spells of a wizard, except here, the trick is to save lives, not pull rabbits out of a hat. So, on any given afternoon in 2006, someone had the brilliant idea of turning this into a kind of educational reality show. They divided a class of surgical interns into two teams to learn the noble art of arterial suturing. Both teams had access to the same arsenal of knowledge, but as in any good drama, there was a twist. One of the teams received a little secret in their study method. And wouldn't you know it, when the big test day arrived, this group was suturing like there was no tomorrow, leaving the others in the dust. Now, what everyone wants to know, what was the special sauce of this group? Alongside this question, let's explore two other study techniques so powerful they could easily be classified as secret weapons for learning. But before we dive into this treasure hunt of knowledge, let's take a peek at how this enigmatic brain of ours works. Think of memorizing the anatomy of the heart not as an exercise in memorizing a shopping list, but as an attempt to understand the lyrics of a Radiohead song. At first, everything seems like a jumble of disconnected information, but as you delve into each verse, or in this case, each chamber and valve, something magical happens. These pieces of information start to intertwine in the depths of your hippocampus, forming a neural tapestry as complex as a work of art. And it's through repetition and constant activation of these networks of neurons that knowledge, like a good song, sticks in the mind, ready to be recalled at the signal of any emergency, or when least expected, like in a crowded elevator. Ah, the mysterious world of memorizing heart anatomy, an epic saga unfolding in the recesses of our brains, specifically in a place called the neocortex, which sounds more like the name of a skyfi movie villain than part of our gray matter. But here's the plot twist. Nobody has really figured out how information migrates from short-term storage to the brain's VIP lounge, long-term storage. It's suspected that this magic happens during those study marathons and, believe it or not, while you're there, snoring and drooling on the pillow. During sleep, your brain decides it's time to tidy up the house. It starts integrating new knowledge about the heart with everything you already know as if throwing a big party and deciding who gets to sit next to whom. And don't think the process stops there. Every time you decide to revisit cardiac anatomy in your thoughts, it's like reactivating a VIP memory, making it open to revisions. Yes, you can teach old knowledge new tricks, updating and reinforcing its connections with other information. Here comes the first study technique, worthy of a magic trick, the flashcard test. This method isn't just about looking at pretty pictures and complicated words. Oh no, it's about calling knowledge out for a duel, forcing it out of hiding and making it show its face. This activation forces the brain to update and strengthen memory in a process that's practically the cognitive equivalent of hitting the gym and making that muscular knowledge flex its biceps. So, next time you're holding a deck of flash cards, remember, you're not just studying, you're throwing a party in your neocortex and making your neurons dance until dawn. Ah, the eternal student dilemma. Diving into textbooks and handouts, frantically underlining every word as if deciphering the secrets of the universe, or facing the reality that perhaps, just perhaps, these techniques are more of a magic show than educational effectiveness. Yes, because rereading and underlining can be as deceptive as a politician during election season, promising the world with information right in our face, but without really fixing anything on the main stage of memory. But here comes the unexpected hero of learning, the mistake, yes, to err is not just human. It's practically a superpower when it comes to studying. Imagine yourself in a mental quiz show where making a mistake is another step toward the ultimate prize of lasting knowledge. Because, believe it or not, every stumble is like an alarm for the brain saying, hey, pay attention here, this is important, 
and when the right answer finally shows up, your brain grabs it and integrates it into its arsenal of wisdom with ninja-like efficiency. Advancing on this path of discovery, we have a second study technique, which is basically the first on steroids. Mixing concepts during study is like doing cerebral crossfit. Instead of hammering the same topic until you can recite it backwards in your sleep, interweaving them brings an extra challenge. Your brain has to jump from one topic to another, forgetting and remembering, which is the equivalent of doing push-ups with neurons. And just like in a good TV series, where plots interwind in surprising ways, mixing study topics helps find unexpected connections and understand the nuances between them, turning studying into a true epic adventure through the jungle of knowledge. So after this intellectual odyssey filled with ninja flashcards and conceptual juggling, we arrive at the grand finale, the glorious win of studying. Yes, my friends, because timing even has its starring role in this comedy of errors we call learning. Who would have thought that between one study marathon and another, our brain, that tireless worker, takes the opportunity to tidy up, organizing and slotting each piece of information into its rightful place in the neocortex, while we're there, dreaming of unicorns or, who knows, hard anatomy. But then, on the eve of the exam, many fall into the temptation of giving that last review as if staring into the solution of an ancient mystery, hoping the information remains as fresh as lettuce the next day. Ah, if only it were that simple. The truth is, this strategy is more flawed than a politician's promise during an election campaign. In the long run, what we cram in during the pre-exam dawn has the same chance of retention as a sin castle in front of a wave. We return, then, to our fearless medical residents, those same ones from the beginning of our saga. Divided into two groups, both devoted the same amount of time to studying surgeries, but with a crucial difference in the schedule. The star group of our story didn't try to absorb everything in a single day, but rather spread the learning over four weeks. And, like a suspense movie were the plot twist. These were the ones who truly shone, proving that in the universe of learning, patience is not just a virtue, it's a strategy. Thus, these three study techniques are not magical, but rather an ode to the incredible machine that is our brain, which, let's be honest, deserves not only an Oscar, but also a Nobel for its ability to deal with the tsunami of information it faces every day. Studying, therefore, is not about cramming data into our heads at the last minute but rather dancing to the tune our brain plays, respecting its rhythms and, who knows, its whims.